Today we're going to make our own fairy tale book. This gives you an opportunity to write your own story using fairy book characters. It's a lot of fun. You can do it as an individual or as a group project. Some of the things you're going to need today are scissors, paper. It's best to have a couple of pretty sturdy pieces of paper like cardstock, a ruler, scissors, a hole punch if you need it, or you can use scissors to poke holes. We'll need some glue, some string, and this is optional, but if you want to dye your paper, we're going to use some tea bags, some old tea bags. Um, you can get your mom and dad to help you. Just put a little water in and a tea bag and let it soak a little bit so you get some nice tea. And we're going to color the paper with the tea. And last but not least, some images, some pictures. Now, what I've done is some got some pictures from coloring books that I've hand colored. Um, you can cut pictures out from magazines. Whatever you find that you like and the characters that you want to use. Remember, if you're cutting out of books, though, ask your mom and dad before you cut out of anything. And with all these materials, we're going to make a fairy tale story, a fairy tale book, all together in one project. So come along with me and let's have some fun. So the first thing you want to do is to find some paper to make your book. The best kind of paper to use is paper that's a little bit thick. It can be cardstock or it can be some of your drawing paper or sketching paper if you have some. Regular paper will work as well. It's just going to buckle a little bit because we're going to get a little damp. Now if you can't find paper that's like card paper like this and you don't want to do the next step, you can just skip the next step. But I'm going to show you a way to make your paper look kind of old, like old fairy tales. So you have to ask your mom and dad to help you with this. You boil a little water and you just need a little bit and put it into a cup and then put a tea bag. Now if your mom and dad drink tea or even coffee, some leftover coffee would work. You just make sure that it's nice and cool and take the old tea bag or new one and just lightly go over your paper like this. Now what you see is you're going to have the paper turn a little bit dark. And it kind of looks like paper does when it gets old. You don't have to do it too much because it, it gets too wet and then it starts to buckle up. But we're going to just set this aside and we're going to let it dry. So before we start to put our book together, let's work on some of the things that we're going to use to keep it um, tied together. So in the end it's going to look kind of like this. First thing you want to do is measure out some holes, kind of evenly spaced these. These are spaced at about two and a half inches apart, but you can do more than that if you want to. And then I'm just going to put some little holes in there about where they are using a hole punch. You can also use a pair of scissors if you don't have a hole punch, something to kind of put some, some places for your string to go through. So after you've decided what your story is going to be about, then you want to start collecting some images. You can do this by going through maybe some of your old coloring books and color cut out some of the coloring pages that you've used in the past. Or if you want to look on the internet, there's sometimes free coloring pages that you can download and color. Or you can find some pictures from storybooks that you can also download. These are some pictures from old storybooks. I like this kind of picture. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine drawing some images and pasting some images. You can do both. You can draw the whole thing. It just depends on what you what way you want to approach making your book. I like drawing, so I'm going to probably do that a lot more. But as you can see, I have some really nice images that I cut out of Puss in Boots, Peter Pan, Captain Hook, Alice in Wonderland. And like I said before, we're going to combine all these characters into one story. Now my story is going to be about Jack and the Beanstalk and Little Red Riding Hood and the three pigs all coming together in one story. I think it should be fun and let's see what we can do next. So for my first picture what you see is 
you see Jack showing Little Red Riding Hood, the beans. And what I did was to draw them from these two pictures. You can also see that if I wanted to cut these out and paste them on, I could do that as well. So I've just drawn some lines here and I'm going to go back over them hopefully so you can see them. I'm not going to draw the whole thing because I know that everybody's working at home. But just to give you an idea of kind of what I want, I want to see the beans over here in his hand. He's going to have some gloves on. And then around them, I'm going to make a forest with some trees. Because they probably would be in some trees, don't you think? This is a fairy tale, after all. So I'll draw some trees in the background, maybe a little path where a little red riding hood has come up. But I'll finish that up later, and I'll show it to you when we're all done with the whole book. But this is what I want you to do. Think of your story, find some pictures, draw your pictures on pieces of paper, either the ones that you've tea stained or just regular paper. If you want just to tea stain your cover, front and back cover, and then put the regular pieces of paper in the middle of that, that would be fine too because you know, the cover will be a little harder than the inside pages. So we're going to go on. I'm going to give you a little break and go ahead and draw some pictures or, or paste them together. And while we're, we're away from each other, I'll do the same. And we'll come back and see how we can put our book together. If you're coloring in your pictures, I'm going to show you a little trick to give it a little three-dimensional feeling to it. So I'm just going to color in um, Jack's leg on the other side. It's green. But instead of just coloring it just a straight, solid green, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by picking a side that I want to be a little bit darker. Now you can either darken this by using a darker color green if you have one. This can be done with paint, crayons, colored pencils, even markers. And just lay out where I want the dark side of, the, of his leg to be. Now every time I color something, I still want to keep it all on this side to be dark and this side to be light. So here's a little bit of dark on the side of his leg like we've done on this one. And then I can take a lighter green and go back in and color in the area that the sun is hitting. And I just go back and forth and kind of smooth that out by blending the two greens together. Now with a colored pencil or even a crayon, I kind of go in a circular, I kind of twist it as I'm going so I don't see this, the strokes of the, the pencil. But you can do it any way you want to. This just helps it to blend a little bit quicker. Now if you're new to coloring and you haven't colored before, this can still be something you can try, but every time you see somebody doing something like me, I've done it for a long time, so it takes practice. If you don't get it exactly as you want it to be, just keep coloring it until you get it to where you want it. And this will continue to help you to do some little dimension to your drawings and your coloring and your painting. So now we're going to work on the cover. This is my tea stained cardstock, and I have the holes for my string to put all my papers together with. And with my cut out pieces of um, coloring pages or drawings that I've done, I'm going to just arrange them in a way that I like. I liked to put my three little pigs over here on this side. And then I have Tinkerbell, and of course you have to have Peter Pan if you have Tinkerbell. But since I only have two pigs here, I'm going to put the third pig over here. And the two other pigs have a pet cat. So I put those together and I left a little room so that I could put my title right here. So before I glue it all together, I'm going to make my title. And the easiest way to do that is just to take your ruler and draw some lines for the top and bottom of your letters. And then you can hold your ruler right at the bottom and you can start to write those letters. So I started writing some of them, but I'm going to show you how I did it. I held my ruler at the very edge of the bottom of the line and then I just made the lines for my letters. And I can't go past that line because the ruler's in the way, so that keeps it nice and straight.
There you go. So after you have that, if it's done in pencil, you can go back over it. You can erase if you have something that you don't like. And then you can draw with it with a pen or color it in with a color pencil or a crayon. And that gives you a nice cover. Now, now we're going to go back and assemble all of it. But before we do that, I'm going to let you finish up your lettering and color it in. And then we'll all come back and put it together. Okay, so I'm finishing up my fairy tale book. And I colored my picture that I was talking about in my story. This is Jack and the Beanstalk and Little Red Riding Hood. Jack sells his cow for magic beans and he shows him the Little Red Riding Hood. That's not how the story goes, but that's how my story goes. And the two of them plant the beans and a giant beanstalk just starts to shoot up. And just at the time they're starting to climb up the beanstalk, one of the little pigs from the three little pigs comes and runs and tells him that he has seen the wolf, wolf on the prowl. So Jack climbs up the beanstalk and realizes that the wolf is heading into Red Riding Hood's grandmother's house. So they run down, they find the hunter, the three little pigs, Jack, Little Red Riding Hood, and the hunter f come to the grandma's house and they get there just in time for and the rest of the story that you can make up. What I'd like you to do is make up your story. You can use characters from all kinds of fairy tales. You can do this as a group project. You can do this by yourself. The main thing is to have fun. Use your imagination. Now once we have all these things together, we're gonna, I'm going to put the last little bit on my book. Remember I wanted to have Peter Pan. And of course, Tinkerbell. Let's put her up there. Oh, she's a little crooked. And then the last brother for the three little pigs. Now in this story, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell aren't in that, my particular story that I just wrote, but I can add more. Okay, so we have our fairy tale book, and what I've done is I've punched holes right along the bottom. Remember, I first punched holes in the cover, and so when the picture was done, I made sure that I lined it up and punched holes through the picture so they would all line up. Now to bind this, what you want to do is you want to get some string and get a big piece at least twice as wide as the book and then a little extra to have some play. The next thing you want to do is tie some little knots at each end. This will help it to keep from unraveling when you're uh, weaving it through the book cover. Find the middle of the piece of string and start by putting the string through, folded and then hold one side of the string and then pull the other one through. So you have one that's going on one side one that's going on the other side. Now with the one that's on the top you start to weave it through every other hole that you've punched in your in your book. Just like when you're sewing with a needle. all the way to the top. And for the second string you do the same thing except you come out, come in the same side that you brought the string under so that you have another in and out. I'm going to leave, even this up a little bit. So it goes in and out again but it goes the other side so that what you end up with is a total binding that holds all the paper together. And when you're all done, you can put a nice bow at the top.
And there you have it, your fairy tale book. I started with one picture, but I hope you do a whole bunch of pictures and tell all kinds of stories. It's very fun to use your imagination. You don't have to stick to the same story. You can write your own. Take your time. Think of fun things that you can do. And most of all, be creative. Till next time, we'll see you later.